Good morning, and thanks for joining us for our worship service this morning. Our call to worship comes to us today from Psalms 103. Praise the Lord, my soul, all my inmost being, praise his holy name. Praise the Lord, my soul, and forget not all his benefits, who forgives all your sins and heals all your diseases, who redeems your life from the pit and crowns you with love and compassion, who satisfies your desires with good things so that your youth is renewed like the eagles. The Lord works righteousness and justice for all the oppressed. He made known his ways to Moses, his deeds to the people of Israel. The Lord is compassionate and gracious, slow to anger, abounding in love. He will not always accuse, nor will he harbor his anger forever. He does not treat us as our sins deserve or repay us according to our iniquities. For as high as the heavens are above the earth, so great is his love for those who fear him. As far as the east is from the west, so far has he removed our transgressions from us. As a father has compassion on his children, so the Lord has compassion on those who fear him. For he knows how we are formed. He remembers that we are dust. Let's bow down for an opening word of prayer. Abba, Father, we confess that we have sinned against you in thought, word, and deed. By what we have done, and by what we have left undone. We have not loved you with our whole heart, mind, and strength. Forgive us when we have wasted your gifts, when we reject your love, and when we wander from your ways. Forgive us when we have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. And when we have been ashamed of the cross of Christ, in your mercy forgive, help us to change, and lead us to be what you desire us to be. To the glory of your name, in Jesus Christ's name, amen. Music fades and 
all is stripped away and I simply come longing just to
Hi, everyone. Just a reminder that our annual congregational meeting will be taking place on Sunday, November 15th at 2 o'clock p.m. at the church. You can go to our website at cecctoronto.com to register. Also, it's not too late to donate to Aisha Madden, a missionary that we support from Urban Promise Toronto. She'll be running the Scotiabank Waterfront Marathon Charity Challenge and is raising important funds to continue the ministry. You can donate to her by going to bit.ly slash UPT underscore CECC. Our scripture reading for today comes from the book of 1 Peter, chapter 4, verses 8 to 11. Above all, keep loving one another earnestly, since love covers a multitude of sins. Show hospitality to one another without grumbling. As each has received a gift, use it to serve one another as good stewards of God's varied grace. Whoever speaks as one who speaks oracles of God, whoever serves as one who serves by the strength that God supplies, in order that in everything God may be glorified through Jesus Christ. To him belong glory and dominion forever and ever. Amen. This is the word of the Lord. Greetings and good day to everyone. It is always a humbling privilege for me to, to share the word of God to all of you. And I hope and pray that all of you will be blessed, that you would be challenged and comforted by the word of God as we dive into it. So I want to share more about who I am. My full name is Ian Wilfred Arienda Jose. Yes, Wilfred. I am a child of God. I am the youngest son of Willie and Nellie Arianda. I, I have two older brothers. I'm a husband to Sandra for 15 years now. I'm a father of six. I can't believe it's six, but I feel blessed. I'm a pastor at CECC. I have been serving at CECC for slightly over just two years now, and it has been a blessing. Another thing about me is that I am created in the image of God. But unfortunately, I was born with sin due to the fall, the original sin by Adam and Eve. But good news is, I am a sinner, but I am saved by grace, forgiven at the cross because of the love and obedience of Jesus Christ, Jesus being the substitute for my sin. I am victorious because of the power of the resurrection of Jesus, you know, resurrecting from the dead. I am a sinner saved by grace. As a sinner, I have a tendency to fall into temptation and make a mess of my life. And in turn, it affects others along the way. It affects others because I live life together with other people my family, my relatives, my neighbors, my church family, 
all of you. I can make a mess. In Christ Emmanuel Community Church, we live life together as brothers and sisters in Christ, as a church family. But since we're all born with sin, yes, we're created in God's image, but there's that sinful nature that, we're, that we have. We can get into each other's nerves. We can tend to hurt each other unintentionally sometimes. And we hurt each other's feelings. So as Christians, as believers, as followers of Jesus Christ, we are saved by grace. And how are we to live life together then? I'm going to be looking at uh, Dietrich Bonhoeffer, you know, Life Together, his book. And I'll be quoting a couple of pass or some, some notes from his book. He says this about being a Christian. He said, being Christian means community through Jesus Christ and in Jesus Christ. Let me repeat that. Christian means community through Jesus Christ and in Jesus Christ. See, today's message I've entitled, Love One Another. The phrase, one another, it's mentioned 58 times in the New Testament, excluding the Gospels. The Greek word for one another is eleon, which denotes a reciprocal mutual work on the part of believers towards one another. Now, how do we live life together? We, the church. So we are called to do this for one another. Look at this picture. We're called to what? To build up, to welcome, to submit, to serve, to be patient, to teach, to love, to honor, to pray for, not to judge, to be truthful, to fellowship with, to be kind, not to grumble against. It's a big list. You know, but to sum everything up that, you know, this, this picture, it boils down to this one thing. is for us to love one another. In John 13, Jesus just finished having the Passover meal. with his disciples, which is, we know as the Lord, the Last Supper. Then after that, Jesus just finished washing the feet of his disciples, and he reveals to them that he will be betrayed. And in that intimate moment, in that room, Jesus said these words to his disciples. A new commandment I give to you, that you Love one another just as I have loved you. You also are to love one another. By this, all people will know that you are my disciples if you have love for one another. Love one another the way Christ loved you. Jesus, you know, just as Jesus has loved, you are also to love one another. See, as we have seen, there's a number of ways to show love to one another. For today, I just want to touch on three of the one, an, one love one, an, uh, one another passages, which is forgive, to bear burden, and to pray for one another. So for our scripture reading for today, I'm not going to dive into it that much, but I will be using it as a launching pad that will lead us to different passages. So looking at our text for today, in 1 Peter 4.8, it says, Above all, keep loving one another earnestly. Keep loving one another earnestly, intensely, enthusiastically, passionately, zealously, seriously, actively, thoughtfully. For, it's kind of like love one another for reals. And one of the ways to love one another is the first one that we're going to look at is forgive one another. In Ephesians 4.32, it says, Be kind to one another, tenderhearted, forgiving one another, as God in Christ forgave you. In the different relationships you have, see if there's any of those relationships where there is a hint of bitterness. 
no, a hint of anger, of, of resentment, or a hint of hostility towards someone. Can you think of someone right now? Let's do a quick exercise here, okay? At this moment right now, in your own space, you know, wherever you are watching her, you know, the first person that comes into your mind, a face or, or faces that, that shows up to think of a person or people whom you have bitterness towards, who you have beef with, who, who has, you know, who you are unhappy with. There are people that might have hurt you or disappointed you. You know, those people that get your blood boiling, the one that you avoid, the one you make sure you don't bump into them. See, I know that it can be hard thinking of these people because it surfaces up, it, you know, it could bring back a lot of bad memories. You know, what they have done to you, or what, you know, what they have done to others that you love. Or maybe they did not you know, do what they said they were going to do. And you're disappointed at them. So do you have that person in mind or those, those people? So how are you feeling right now? How's your high blood pressure? Are you smiling? Are you frowning? Are you grinding your teeth? See, unforgiveness has a way of ruining relationships. It does. It has a way of ruining your day. Unforgiveness has a way of ruining you. It is actually harmful for you not to forgive. I've heard of this illustration many times and I love it and I find it very helpful in explaining the harm of unforgiveness and holding grudges. And it's this, it says bitterness, unforgiveness, and holding a grudge is like drinking poison and waiting for the other person, for that person to get hurt or to die. Bitterness, unforgiveness is holding a grudge and holding a grudge is like you drinking a poison, hoping that the other person that you're thinking of, they have you, you have a grudge on, that they're the one that's getting hurt, that they're the one that's going to die. But really, it's you that's getting hurt. It's you that's getting poisoned. Forgiveness is good for you. It is good for your health, for our health. And yes, forgiveness is hard to do. C.S. Lewis says, to be a Christian means to forgive the inexcusable because God has forgiven the inexcusable in you. Yes, forgiveness is hard. And guess what Jesus had to do for us to be forgiven? Beaten, flogged, spat upon, whipped, humiliated, crucified. Yes, forgiveness is hard. In Colossians 3, 12 to 14, it reminds us. It says, put on then as God's chosen ones, holy and beloved, compassionate hearts, kindness, humility, meekness, and patience, bearing with one another. And if one has complained against another, forgiving each other as the Lord has forgiven you. So you also must forgive. And above all these things, put on love, which binds everything together in perfect harmony. See, in forgiveness, there is freedom, there is life, there is restoration. We demonstrate love to one another by forgiving one another. Forgiving one another is an act of love. Secondly, we love one another by bearing one another's burden. Because of our sinful nature, because of our brokenness, we can be a burden to one another. There are brothers and sisters in Christ who needs our assistance and needs our helping hand. And maybe you feel that way too. I need a helping hand. See, part of loving one another is we carry each other's burden. In Galatians 6 too, it says, Bear one another's burden and so fulfill the law of Christ. But you might be thinking, why would I want to minister 
to one another, to another person. I myself have to take care of myself. I have my own issues. I have my own struggles, my own burdens. And bearing one another's burden, another people's burden, it will require me my time. It will require my money, energy, emotional, mental, spiritual, physical sacrifices. See, how do I do this? How, how do we bear one another's burdens? See, there's so many pains that some of you might be going through right now. It could be marital problems, marriage is breaking down, or maybe talk of divorce is happening, maybe adultery is happening there. You know, parenting is hard and challenging, especially if you have a special needs child. Different relationships that, that you might have conflict with, or maybe you have job issues, or you're looking for a job, you just lost a job, or you're just waiting, or just kind of like that, that, that stress that I might get laid off. You know, kids and, and parents' relationship breaking down. It could be getting nasty. Some of maybe your children has walked away from the faith and it hurts you. You know, maybe your kid is being bullied or maybe your kid is being a bully. See, we may feel like I don't want to carry someone else's burden. My life is tough enough. I don't want to carry or bear someone else's issues. No, can't. Those people, they just sap my energy and I don't have that much energy to begin with. So life can be filled with hardship and pitfalls. And as a church family, we are called to journey. Journey life together. Bonhoeffer says, it's, it's right here, it's a long one and, and follow along with me. It says, the Christian, however, must bear the burden of a brother. He must suffer and endure the brother. It is only when he is a burden that another person is really a brother and not merely an object to be manipulated. A burden of man was so heavy for God himself that he had to endure the cross. God verily bore the burden of man in the body of Jesus Christ. But he bore them as a mother carries her child as a shepherd enfolds the lost lamb that had been found. God took men upon himself and they weighed him to the ground. But God remained with them and they with God. In bearing with men, God maintained fellowship with them. It was the law of Christ that was fulfilled in the cross. And the Christian must share in this law. The Bible characterizes the whole life of a Christian as bearing the cross. So I would like to encourage you and challenge you, wherever you are in the burden spectrum, either you're someone that can help and carry bear others and you know bear other burdens, or maybe you're someone who needs help, who needs someone else in helping you carry the burden, wherever you are in that spectrum. So as we learn how to bear one another burden, number one, I would like to challenge or encourage you is be ready to give love. It says what? Bear one another's burden and so fulfill the law of Christ. Number two is be open to ask for love, ask for help. It's an old movie, Tom Cruise, Jerry Maguire, and he says, help me help you. Don't be afraid to ask for help, to ask for assistance. We journey together as brothers and sisters in Christ. Number three is be open. Be open to receive love. You know, I don't, you know some of us, we feel like, no, 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 sorry, sorry, I, I don't want to trouble you. No, no, I don't want to be a burden. You know, I just please, you can help someone else. No, I just want to encourage you. Approach each other. Approach us. As pastors or deacons, if you feel like you need help, you need prayer, financial assistance, or this and that, just ask, and we will see what we can do. We want to help each other out. We want to journey with each other. I want to read this to you in Matthew 25, 35 to 40. It says, For I was hungry, and you gave me food. 
I was thirsty and you gave me drink. I was a stranger and you welcomed me. I was naked and you clothed me. I was sick and you visited me. I was in prison and you came to me. Then the righteous will answer him saying, Lord, when did we see you hungry and feed you or thirsty and give you drink? And when did we see you a stranger and welcome you or naked and clothe you? And when did we see you sick or in prison and visit you? And the king would answer them, Truly I say to you, as you did to one of the least of these my brothers, you did it to me. You did it for Christ. You did it to Christ. Bonhoeffer says, It is the fellowship of the cross to experience the burden of others. If one does not experience it, the fellowship he belongs is not Christian. If any member refuses to bear that burden, he denies the law of Christ. Bear each other's burdens. So we looked at forgive, we looked at bearing each other's burdens, and the third one is pray for one another. Let's pray for one another. It's a great show of love. In James 5.16, it says, Therefore, confess your sins to one another and pray for one another that you may be healed. The prayer of a righteous person has great power as it is working. It's important to understand the nature of prayer, that it is an invitation from God. We see prayer as a Mere practice in a small room, in a quiet place, with a quiet voice. No, but this is God inviting us. God Almighty, Creator, all-powerful, full of grace, full of glory. We are being invited by God. Heavenly Father, Jesus, the Son of God, and the Holy Spirit, to commune, to be with Him. Picture it as opening the door to the most powerful place in the universe and being able to have time with the most powerful being in the universe. Requesting and talking to our most powerful God, entering His throne room. This is a planning session with the most powerful being in the universe, God. And you're asking God, God, bless this brother. God bless this sister. This is the invitation to approach him and pray for others. And this is only made possible because of Jesus. Rent Collective have a song, Boldly I Approach Your Throne. So when we pray, we can approach God because of the cross, because of the resurrection, because the veil has been torn, You know, the sin that separates us from God, but not anymore because of what Christ has done. So let us be courageous and eager to pray for one another. In the old church, there was a a lady named Veronica who would email me every month or every two weeks and just ask me, Pastor, and how can I pray for you? What is your, your prayer request? And she would just diligently pray for me, connect with me and ask for prayer requests. And I would pray for her too and ask her. And what I learned from her is that I will not be afraid to pray for people. She's actually afraid to pray for people, but God challenged her. So she approached a couple of people to do this. I also learned from her that I will not be afraid to ask for prayer. And I will also seek to pray for others. Learn this lesson from this lady who merely just wants to pray for me. Bonhoeffer says, you know what happens when you pray for others? He says, I can no longer condemn or hate a brother for whom I pray, no matter how much trouble he causes me. I can no longer condemn or hate a brother for whom I pray, no matter how much trouble he causes me. So why should I do this? Why should I forgive? Why should I bear another person's burden? Why should I pray for other people? 
well, when we're commanded to do so. And as disciples of Jesus Christ, we are to follow His example. Jesus forgave. Jesus carried people's burdens. Jesus prays for us. John 13, 35. By this, all people will know that you are my disciples. This is another reason why we should do these things. Because Jesus says, a new commandment I give to you, that you love one another. Just as I have loved you, you are to love one another. Why? Because why should we do this? And what would happen if we do this? By this, all people will know that you are my disciple if you have loved one another. See, also found in our reading today on why we should forgive is this on why we should bear, on why we should pray for each other. He says, in order that in everything, God may be glorified through Jesus Christ. When we love, when we bear each other's burdens, and when we forgive, when we pray for each other, God is glorified. People will see that we are of Christ. So as a disciple, we are to give God the glory. So just now, time for just some, some practical application time. So number one is, you know that person that you thought of in the beginning or a group of people that you thought of? Forgive that person or those people who came to your mind. Forgive them and release this hurt to God. Number two is pray with someone today. Today, Sunday. I want to encourage you and challenge you. Give someone a call. Text them, video chat them, whatever it is. Say, can I pray not just, can I pray for you, but can I pray with you? So at that moment, on that phone call, or in that video chat, or in person, pray with someone today. And the third one is connect with someone this week and just ask them, how can I bless you? How can I help you? How can I pray for you? And intentionally invest to love, intentionally bless, intentionally serve, and intentionally intentionally minister to someone this week. You know that term, random act of kindness? Well, it might be random for those people, but it's intentional for you. It's intentional for the giver. So be intentional and ask someone, how can I help you? How can I bless you? How can I pray for you? And then the other flip side for that is maybe you're in the other spectrum of this is approach someone this week and say, please help me. I need prayer. I need you to help me carry some of the burden that I have. See, in the season that we're in right now, it's messy. The world is messy. We are messy. And our relationships can get messy. So I want to encourage you and challenge you to do this. In loving, forgive. In loving, carry each other's burdens, and in loving, pray for each other. Let's pray. God Almighty, Jesus Christ, Son of God, and the Holy Spirit, our Counselor, we thank you that you are God and not us. We thank you for your statures. We thank you for your examples, Jesus. We thank you Holy Spirit, for convicting us and leading us. Help us to love each other so that you may be glorified, so that we, may, so that we would fulfill what you want us to do, God, so that people would know that we are Christians. We want to give you the glory. So I want to pray right now that you give us opportunities today and the rest of this week to be a blessing 
and give us opportunities too this week for us to be blessed. And in all that we do, in all that we say and think, we want to point people to you because we want you to be glorified. We pray this all in Jesus' name. Amen. God bless you all and have a wonderful week. Looking down, holding on to hearts still wounding. To those who've yet to find in places near where love is moving. Cast off the robe you're wearing, set aside the names that you've been given. May this place of rest. In the fold of your journey, bind you to hope. We will never walk alone in the shelter of each other. We will live, we will live in the shelter of each other. Hearts have turned to stone, there is hope we know the rocks will cry out. And the tears on us alone, that will fall into the hands that hold us. Come away from where you're hiding, set aside the lies that you've been living. In this place of rest, in the fold of your journey, bind you to hope. You will never walk alone in the shelter of each other. We will live, we will live in the shelter of each other. is any home we all must believe our lives are not our own we all belong God has given us each other we will never walk alone in the shelter